Hello everyone. Uh, tonight I want to talk about something uh, unusual for me and it's a book review. The reason why I want why I want to talk about this book is very simple. It's because this book is quite original, it's different and it's very well written. And in my personal opinion it's made my time much better than before. Maybe you can't notice it but I do. And maybe in future videos I will explain you why this book improved my tying. So, for a start, uh, let's talk about the design of this book. This book is uh, well made. It's a solid piece of writing. Uh, the quality of paper is amazing. It's thick. The printing uh, job is amazing as well. Uh, the thing that uh, brought my attention is how the book was designed. And everything here is... Uh, handwritten not everything but a lot of things here are uh, handwritten or the drawings are also made by hand it's not some uh, digital thing or photo it's everything is uh, done with soul the, the writer and the, the designer of this book uh, did an amazing job incorporating his soul into this book I mean he did most of the things illustrations here he did them his, himself so like even uh, step by step instructions are done uh, with hand drawings and hand writings here, so which uh, it's quite amazing, it's quite unusual and, and gives some uh, retro style to this book. The second thing I want to talk about this book is the concept of the book. Uh, that's very important because the book is very different as I said from any other book I've read before uh, and basically it's because it teaches you how to think uh, as opposed to how to copy. That's very important in tying. Uh, uh, it's important to have basics, uh, basic laws, how to tie th certain things, and then using your brain, you just develop them into your own creations and on your own flies. Uh, that's even more satisfying for you as a tire because you can create your own flies. I'm not saying that you're going to create anything new, it's almost impossible to do that, but you're going to think and to create something that, uh, that's new for you. Of course, someone else does, did it before, but who cares? It's important that we enjoy the ride. One may ask why I'm recommending a book uh, as opposed to some, some YouTube channel or something like that. Uh, I consider myself to be an old-fashioned guy. I like paper, I like to read magazines, I like to read books, not only fly tying books. Uh, I think it's, it has uh, some, some sort of uh, intimacy when you can hold something in your arms and read. Uh, paper has its soul, that's what I think. Uh, and I feel very sad that a uh, lot of fly fishing magazines are cancelled and uh, not many books are printed lately, I think. Uh, some 20, 30 years ago, people were writing more books than today. So I think it's quite refreshing that Mr. Gordon Van der Spey uh, wrote this book with his friend, uh, sorry, Tim Wedge, uh, and he made an astonishing work here. What you will find inside of this book are couple of flies, several flies, with recipes. But those recipes are not something you should follow up, up to a detail. It's more like a technique, how you're supposed to deal with certain types of flies, how you're going to solve certain problems, and then you can apply these things to some other flies and some other problems. You just have to be creative and, and to think how you can apply something that's what's written here to something else. Uh, that ha that you have on your bench when you're tying your flies. The, the other thing you will find that in this book is at the beginning of each chapter the writer is giving a short story, brief uh, introduction about that fly uh, from a real-life situation, how he fished it or someone else fished it so you will get involved more deeply into the book because it's more like a biography uh, it's sometimes an adventure it's it's very different book from uh, just recipe book. Uh, apart from flies that are mentioned in uh, one area of the book, you will also uh, learn how to recognize, how to use certain materials, how to collect them, how to harvest them. For example, he even mentions how to harvest materials from a roadkill or how to harvest material from a pet or how to go in a, any kind of a shop like a stationery shop and buy some pearls or whatever. Like, it's not just fly fishing shop, you can buy materials for your flies. It's everywhere around you. So it's uh, not uh, like commercial kind of a book. It's real life kind of a book. 
so guys let's jump into tying and i will show you those techniques that writer stated over here how those techniques will actually likely improve your tying and why now let's talk about gordon's uh, skinny damsel and as you can see it's very nice very lifelike pattern and this pattern most importantly incorporates a couple of techniques uh, that are very important for every tire so let's start with tying of this fly so first of the techniques would be plan the fly i'm using size 12 uh 900 bl tmco hook and this hook is not the ideal solution because it's not long shank so let's just pretend that this is actually a size 14 with a wider gap uh, which makes sense uh, i will use semperfly gsp thread and i will lay a thread foundation over the whole length of the hook and this is very important because the thread foundation will actually give you the friction between material and thread which will result in more durable fly. So after you've covered the whole shank that you plan, it's important to plan the fly if you're tying it for the first time and it's going to be one third, two thirds more or less so with two thirds being over here and one third being over here I will mark one spot over here for me some two millimeters behind the hook eye and I will not by any chance pass this spot I will also stop over here with my, thor uh, with my abdomen and I'll start my thorax over here so, first of all, let's choose the proper marabou feather. Mr. Gordon says that uh, you should use those with the finer tips, which are, aren't these, which are more or less these. So I'll just take some of them from the middle, and I'll go there with my scissors and cut them off. Now, don't take too much, just a couple is enough, and because this material is very, very lightly, you want to tame it somehow, so lick your finger, or use a sponge with water, or whatever you want, and tame it. More or less, body length should be extended past the hook bend, so that's more or less it. If it's too long, you can always pinch out a little bit of tails here with pinch wrap so placing the thread between your index finger and thumb go around the hook shank and then go up and then pinch those materials with another wrap secure them with third wrap in front of everything lock them because I'm using GSP I'm using one more turn over here now it's time to place some copper wire and it's time to place it on the far side of the hook but before that I want to take and cut the excess here so it won't bother me as I tie so tying the copper wire or any wire on the far side of the hook will help you prevent uh, prevent trapping the tail or dispos dispositioning the tail so touching turns going forward creating already a little bit of taper in my fly and I'll stop a couple of more wraps up so I have to cut these butt ends a little bit more So planning the fly was important because I know where to stop with a couple of flies you get the, the 
the habit done so you know where to stop and what to do. So this is it. Now let me just tie these buttons a little bit better and then go back. Now here I'll stop and I'll catch another batch of marabou with finer tips with nice tapering in them. I'll take uh, catch them for the for the body. Now notice how little material I'm using here. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of my spit to tame those materials and then with two wraps catch those materials and then proceed forward. And don't pass the place where you want to finish your thorax. Now because marabou is quite fragile, be careful how you work with it and go with in touching turns over the hook shank. So go in touching turns slightly over wrapping your overlapping your marabou. And if it's too short, place your finger to hold it, then wrap around place finger to hold it and go with your other hand around the hook to catch the materials again. So wrap around, place, release the dominant hand, wrap around, catch, release the dominant hand to catch again from the near side and then a couple of times like that. Now catch your catch materials and locking turn two locking turns now what is really important is to do the cross wrap cross rib uh, this is going to reinforce your fly and as you notice wire is not going over the tail, it's going directly over the body so do those ribs and then catch the wire I pull the wire down, I pull the thread the opposite direction and then I'll just hold the thread and break the wire Now, some materials, they demand to use soft wrap. That means that you don't pull tightly immediately on them. Uh, you just need to do soft wrap. So I'm using, instead of raffia, I'm using nymph skin, sort of. So I'll place it slightly towards me and then with a very soft wrap. Now, if your thread is fighting you like this, Spin your bobbin counterclockwise so your thread will go towards your hand and you will be able to catch materials. Now, when everything is in place, pull tight. Now, I pull on the material, let me try to show you here. I pull back and I pull up, like so. And now it's important to know how to dub materials. Now, if you dub your dubbing anti-clockwise with each wrap, you're going to undub it slightly, which on this surface it's not going to affect it significantly. But if you're making a dub, dub body of your fly, it can affect it. So, preferable direction of dubbing would be clockwise, like so. If you look from the above, it's clockwise. Use as little dubbing as possible because you're going to be, you're going, you will be able to control everything better uh, as opposed to having too much dubbing, which will actually create too much bulk and it will be much more difficult to control taper, shape, whatever you need to do with it. Now, notice how thin this dubbing, dubbing noodle is. So, I will go. And I'll catch a little bit of this nymph skin with it 
just to place it where it belongs and then I'll go with my dubbing so I can even overlap my dubbing as you can see I can go over wraps and now I'll add more because I'll need it so let me just check okay the position so I'll add just a slight little bit of more dubbing here Nah, okay. I'll have this thorax here a little bit back. And now it's time to do loop. This is too thin thread. Instead of splitting the thread, I'll just make a loop, which is the same thing. I'll split the thread here. This is like a split thread. I leave my dubbing twist twister into it so it, it will keep tension and I'll prepare CDC. Leave those buttons uh, sticking out from your clip because it's going to be easier for uh, to catch them with your thread. Insert those steps into the thread. Now open clip without any hesitation. Just open it and remove it. If you hesitate you'll just pinch materials and pull them out and it's stressful sometimes to be honest I'll pull those materials push them towards the fly and then if it's too much you can just push them with your fingers a little bit those buttons make them perpendicular if they're not if they're crisscrossing they're gonna trap each other when you twist now you can lick your fingers again yeah, this file involves a bit of licking to tame those materials. So fold those materials back. Just fold them back, fold them back, fold them back. And then let's go. Now notice how much space I have over here. If I crowded this, it would be terrible for the end result. and this would be it I don't want to use everything because this uh, CDC has rather rich barbs so it's quite uh, fluffy uh, I think that like lower quality CDC would be even better here because those legs would be perfect these look a little bit maybe oversized so as you can see there are like just a couple of them not too many okay this is my foundation for the for the eyes just go a little bit one thread right back now I'll pull nymph skin pull it up pull those legs back pull it up to make it more narrow if you keep it wide and you tie it down it will go around the hook and it will place those legs downwards I want to avoid that so I'll just keep them on the top of the hook shank like so and then pull back a couple of locking turns and now it's time to place some mono eyes I haven't been using mono eyes much, so I'm not very, very confident when tying them. But crisscrossing in figure of eights should secure them, and that's what Mr. Gordon says in his book. Just crisscross a couple of times, and now it's time to add some dubbing. Yeah, this looks okay. Use as thin dubbing noodle as you can make. That's very important. Now what Gordon says in his book is there is a little trick that he also learned from someone else and that's how to dub the eyes uh, or around the eyes actually without making round head, ball shaped head. Uh, if you want like a more flat profile like damsels have you should uh, dub 
around the eyes, around each individual eyes, eye. So take very small amount of dubbing and make the thinnest model you can. So if you can see clearly dubbing in your hand, then you're using too much. So the best indicator of how much dubbing you should use is like if you can barely see it in your, on your finger. Now I'll just do a couple of reps behind the eyes and then I'll go around each eye. Oh, let's go here and then I want to get dirt again. And I'm in front of it. Now I'll just place nymph skin without any pools. So just place it over the eyes. I'll catch it with my thread. Okay, I'll just don't like this eyes dub over here. catch it. If you pull too tight, when you cut it close, it will just pop out. And we'll finish the fly. There is, there is no need you make a head with your thread or here, because you already have a head and it's quite prominent one. Now I will pull a little bit, not too much though, I'll cut close. So guys this is the, the, the fly that incorporates a lot of different techniques as you, as you, you saw and it will actually uh, improve your tying if you think uh, about those techniques as you tie them on your fly. So plan the fly, that's the number one, because it will make your every fly sing. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and see you next week. Blah, 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 blah. Meow. Meow. They're not afraid of cats. Okay. So in this so as it gives a very big Yeah. Maybe first try was the best one. Huh? First try was the best one. Sometimes it works like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I know. Many you times try first time and then you try again. Then yeah, yeah. fuck, fuck. You need to make a okay. Uh, Just stop. I hate it. I, I'm not going to, to talk while this shit is going behind me. Yeah. Nah, they don't care. It's okay. Stop. They're gonna stop in a second. Okay, stop. Yeah. So, without any further ado, let's go just into time and... What the it's, fuck? It's almost midnight and play is still bumping. What's wrong with them? Midnight. Work hard, play hard. <laughs> Whoa. So, guys, without any further ado, let's go into time.